Hey guys, how's it going? Dion here. Today we're taking a look at the iPhone SE in the product red color. So here we have the box. We're gonna go ahead and get straight into this. You can see that it's tinted a little bit red. We have the red phone here on the front and open that up. Apple logo is also red, very nicely themed. Of course, we're unboxing all the colors here and we have some special little product red pamphlet in there. Will the stickers be red? Will this, no, no red stickers, just white stickers. Would have been cool, but nope. Uh, that's all you're gonna get inside of here. Put that to one side. Of course, the star of the show, the red iPhone with a black screen, of course, because with the SE, we're only getting the black fronts this time around. Side, and there you go. The really deep black or red, I mean, and it, it looks really, really good. Almost like a candy apple. Let's go ahead and remove the film right here. And there we go, put that down. Fold the film back nicely so we can put it back in the box in a sec. And there you go, it looks very, very, very nice. Real quick, just so you can see what else is in the box. And of course, this is gonna get repetitive if you watch a couple of the unboxings, but some people don't watch more than once. So of course, charging block right here, ear pods, no adapter to connect any other type of headphones. So you'd have to buy that separately and USB to lightning right there. Now this phone is capable of fast charging, but this is not a fast charging block. You're gonna have to buy that separately if you want to do that, which would charge the phone about 50% in 30 minutes or so, which is a really nice feature if you plan to use this a lot. However, the battery life on this is gonna last you definitely a day, if not into the next day which uh, you know, it depends on your usage, but it's gonna be pretty good battery life. So moving on, let's go ahead and put this to one side, boot up this phone and talk a little bit about the iPhone SE. Now this retails for $400, you get 64 gigs of internal storage with the base model. And then for 50 bucks more, you can get 128, another 50, you can get 256, which is pretty dang good. It's not super affordable. It's not like $400 is chump change, but compared to 1,500 and 1,200 and $1,000, this is definitely really, really good. Especially since it has the exact same internals, or not all the internals, but the same processor, the A13, which has a CPU, GPU, and a bunch of other cool things in there that bring this phone into the other level and competes against any top tier phone out there. So, you know, it competes against the 11 Pro, all the new galaxies, everything like that. This is gonna be as fast as those guys. So that's kind of really, really great. Setup and everything is going to be the exact same as you've gotten used to. Of course, the size of the phone is gonna be the exact same as you've gotten used to with an iPhone 7 or an iPhone 8. Just as a quick rundown, if you're coming from an iPhone 7, you're now gonna get wireless charging because the back is glass to allow that to happen. The iPhone 7 had an aluminum back, which didn't allow that to happen iPhone 8, you had wireless charging and a very similar back to this, so you know that. The other change here is of course visual. You now have the Apple logo here in the center and there is no text whatsoever except for product red right here because on the white one, it doesn't say anything because uh, it's not a special edition, but of course you get nice little product red. It actually looks really nice and tasteful right there. So you can see that there, it reflects nicely. Very nice color. Let's go ahead and set up Touch ID just so you can, oh. Sorry, so you can see how it works. Of course, again, these home buttons, remember they changed them, they're no longer physical and they haven't been for a long time, but in case you're upgrading from like an iPhone 6 or something like that, it's now like a haptic feeling, like it feels like a normal home button, but worth noting. Let's go ahead and just set this guy up real quick. Now again, since you are getting that A13 chip in there, it's gonna be much, 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 much faster than an iPhone 7 or an iPhone 8. It's gonna run any game on the App Store it's uh, let's see, don't transfer. I can't talk and click buttons at the same time. Oh my goodness. Now you are gonna get True Tone Display. You're gonna get Hey Siri functionality. You can choose your appearance, dark or light. Let's go with light. You can change the haptic button feedback. The feeling that you get with it, we'll keep it at two. Display zoom, and uh, there you go. There you have it. It's gonna look very similar. Let's go, oh, let's go ahead and turn up the brightness there so you can see. Display is plenty bright. It looks very nice and beautiful. The whole look, and one of the things about these bezels and everything, You'll hear a lot of people complain about it and say like, oh, this isn't 2020 device uh, standards. You know, you can get an Android phone for $300 that has a full screen or whatever. You can't listen to those people because those people will say anything, just about anything to just, you know, be right in their own little world. But it all depends on the use cases and what you're looking for. If you're looking for a device that's gonna run the latest games, run the latest things, everything that you want it to run and for it to have a longer lifespan than an iPhone 8, iPhone 7 or anything like that, 
then this is the device to get. If you want a smaller device, because the current iPhones are quite large, even the iPhone 10 here, by standards, it's a much larger device to hold. Um, I keep using, and I'm gonna continue using this example, my mom would not be able to upgrade to an iPhone 10 or an iPhone 11. She would, she can't. She loves her iPhone 7. She loves the way it handles. She loves the way the UI is and the home button and everything. She's tried to use this. First of all, she thinks it's too big. She thinks they're too heavy. And she also does not like the gesture navigation. There you go. That's one person, but that one person is a huge subset of the population. And you know, not everyone loves touchscreen gestures. Not everyone likes a big phone. This is the phone for mostly everyone. And this phone is super, super great. You have a new camera that's gonna take way better pictures than an iPhone 7 and better pictures than an iPhone 8. And that's mostly due to the A13 chip, which allows it to process better images than previously. You're also gonna get portrait mode with this, which is a nice little feature. It's not something I use super often because it's kinda not great even on the iPhone 11 Pro, but it's nice to have in ideal conditions. You can get some really nice stuff. You are gonna have only one lens, but really most of the times I only use the one lens on my iPhone. I don't use the other two. And overall, I think this is just a really, really great phone. One of the other things is that, yes, it's 400 bucks. Again, we go back to the point that that's depending on where you are in life, that is still a ton of money. Um, comparatively to, you know, $800 or $1,100 phone, it's much more feasible and that's easy to understand. But the nice thing about this is that accessories are also gonna be cheaper and Apple Care is also cheaper. And definitely get Apple Care for this because these phones, while they last a long time, you can see an iPhone 7 is still working in perfect condition despite it having clearly quite a few drops here. Um, so it will work for a long time, but it's nice to get the Apple Care for that peace of mind, especially since it's not that super expensive. It's a nice little thing that you can add on there if you, if you can afford it. If you can't, then you know, just know, put a case on it or something. And talking about cases, let's segue actually to that before I forget and end this video or something. Let me show you if you want uh, how they look with cases. If not, you can click away, but if you wanna see how they look with cases, here we have three cases from the folks over at Totally. They sent these out so we can see. Here we have it in a clear silicone case. This is the red one. And uh, you can see how that looks. Pretty good, pretty good. I feel like the darker the phone gets, the less a see-through silicone case works. That's why my favorite for this is the white iPhone that we saw in the previous video. Here we have a smoked black case. There you go, you can kind of see the red through it. Still see the Apple logo and product red signage there, which is nice. It actually kind of gets a darker brown color combining the two. And you might not be able to see that on camera that well, but it ends up looking a little bit brown with red. It actually looks kind of cool. I would actually prefer a deep black case for this though, for the red one, because I really like the red and black combo and it matches nicely with the fact that the screen is also all black. And here we have a clear kind of matte finish case right there. So you can see that kind of tones down the color a little bit, almost makes it um, go towards the pink side a little. But uh, yeah, you can see that there, just so you can get an idea of how those look. And the next videos, we'll be taking a look at the official silicone case and the leather case from Apple to see how that looks. So make sure to stay tuned for that. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And aside from that, thanks for watching. Make sure to check out the other videos and leave a like. It really helps out the channel more than anything. Like just leaving a like helps more than subscribing and everything because of the YouTube algorithm. So thank you for watching and I will catch you guys in the next video. Goodbye.